At this time, uh, we are going to hear from uh, several legislators. We thought, having heard kind of a, a national picture from Lily, that it would be good to uh, talk a little bit about some state level issues that are really important. Uh, and keeping in with this theme of educator voice, uh, we wanted to hear from both Republican and Democratic members uh, of the legislature who have been supportive of OEA on our issues. We've got a lot going on. Uh, you may recall that uh, you received a, an email from us and a survey uh, not too long ago asking you to submit questions. We, we drew uh, questions uh, or, and, and we, we looked at the questions you submitted. Floor assistants will have index cards if anybody didn't su submit a question earlier, uh, but you have something burning, we'll, we'll collect those cards. Uh, so raise your hand, floor assistants will have cards to pass out, and, uh, and after we get through a couple of the questions that were submitted ahead of time, uh, hopefully we'll have uh, an opportunity to, to answer or to ask a few other questions. So it gives me great pleasure, welcome, uh, to introduce four distinguished members of the Ohio General Assembly. Uh, and let me begin with uh, the person to my immediate left, uh, Senator Teresa Gavarone. Senator Gavarone is a Republican from Bowling Green, Ohio. She represents Senate District 2 in Northwest Ohio, which includes Erie, Ottawa, and Wood Counties, parts of Fulton and Lucas Counties. She began her public service as a member of the Bowling Green City Council, was elected to the Ohio House in 2016, and in 2019, she accepted an appointment to the Ohio Senate after former Senator Randy Gardner accepted his new role as uh, Chancellor of Higher Education. In the General Assembly, Senator Gavarone has served on the House Education Committee and is now a member of the Senate Education Committee. She also serves as Vice Chair of the Senate Higher Education Committee. She's been a strong advocate for educators and students. While in the House, she was the primary sponsor of OTES reforms recommended by the Educator Standards Board that later became part of Senate Bill 216 to eliminate that 50% standalone growth measure uh, in our evaluation system. She's currently lead sponsor of the School Bus Safety Act. Please welcome Senator Teresa Gavarone. To her left, we have Representative Don Jones. Representative Jones is a Republican from Harrison County, serving his first term in the Ohio House. Before coming to the Ohio House, Don Jones was an agricultural educator and OEA member, uh, and a Future Farmers of America advisor at Harrison Central High School for 23 years. Representative Jones was initially named as Vice Chair of the House Primary and Secondary Education Committee, which we were happy to have a teacher in that role. And we're even more excited that now he is the chair of the House Education Committee. No there. No he has demonstrated his commitment to education issues as the lead sponsor of House Bill 154 to repeal the state takeover law and restore local control. And he's also the lead sponsor of House Bill 322, which seeks to revise the teacher residency re program including eliminating RESA. <laughs> Welcome, Representative Jones. No pressure. No pressure, to his left, we have Representative Phil Robinson, Democrat from House District 6. He's in his first term in the legislature from Solon, Ohio, previously served as Executive Director of City Year Cleveland, a nonprofit organization that provides support to at-risk students he serves as the ranking member of the House Primary and Secondary Education Committee, where he works with his Democratic colleagues as well as the chair of the committee, the person to his right, uh, to advance key legislation. Uh, one such example is the passage of House Bill 154 to repeal the state takeover. It was an important bipartisan effort. Representative Robinson, thank you so much for being with us, and thank you for your leadership. And finally, we have somebody who uh, has been around a little bit longer and, and maybe a little bit more familiar to, to many of you, particularly those of you from Northeast Ohio. Senate Minority Leader Kenny Yuko from the 25th District uh, in the Senate, which includes parts of Cuyahoga and Lake Counties. Senator Yuko was elected to the Senate in 2014 and was selected by his colleagues to serve as the head of the Senate Democratic Caucus in 2017, previously served in the Ohio House from 2005 to 2012. 
Before being elected, Senator Yuko worked for Laborers Local 860 for 30 years, serving much of that time as a political organizer. So Senator Yuko has unionism in his blood. And he has been a tireless advocate for public education, public employees, and collective bargaining. He marched with us in opposition to Senate Bill 5. He supports adequate and equitable funding for public education and greater charter school accountability. Welcome, Senator Yuko. So I want to give each of you an opportunity to just make a couple of opening uh, comments. And as you do that, I, I want to get to the theme that we're talking about today, and that is this whole idea of educator voice. So as you think about the work that you do in the legislature, particularly on education issues, talk a little bit about how you approach that. And, and as you give us a little bit of background on yourself, if, if you have any advice for us on, on how we can make sure that we're effective in making sure the voice of educators are heard. And I'll start with Senator Gavron. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. It, it really is an honor to uh, address you on uh, issues that really matter for our kids. Um, just a little background on me. I, I've been an attorney for 25 years. I'm a mother of three, and all three of my kids went to uh, Bowling Green City Schools. Um, <laughs> Um, two of them are still in college. My oldest just graduated from Baldwin-Wallace in May, and they came out of high school and school very well prepared for the next step. I, I can't say enough good things about uh, the education that they received at Bowling Green Schools. Um, when my kids were little, I had uh, the great pleasure of being a parent volunteer. I worked in the kindergarten classroom, and I read with the first graders every Friday, and I worked in the library and checked out books and did story time, and it was uh, just wonderful to be in a position to um, work with teachers, work with students, and, and really get a different understanding of uh, what the classroom setting is like and the challenges that are out there. So I was uh, more than happy to sponsor House Bill 5, 540 that uh, ended up going into um, Senate Bill 216 that reformed OTES and really worked in a bipartisan way because really um, the most important thing with any piece of legislation I think is to listen, to listen to the people who are going to be affected by this legislation and uh, listen to all sides because at the end of the day you want to make sure that you're getting it right. So um, again really happy to be here and uh, look forward to uh, answering some questions today. Thank you very much Senator. Representative Jones. Well, thank you. Uh, as uh, it was already stated, I spent 23 years in the classroom. Uh, I have my wife with me this morning. She's also a fifth grade teacher, so you're talking to, uh, yep, so. We, we covered both ends of the spectrum from elementary to, to high school, uh, but we have, we have two beautiful daughters. Uh, one is a senior in high school. She'll graduate this May, and our oldest daughter is finishing up uh, her uh, education at Ohio State ATI in Worcester. But, you know, as I taught, you know, the older I got, I don't know if I got smarter or if I just got more frustrated. I think it was more frustrated. You know, we, we would joke at times about at lunch, around the lunch table, which many of you probably still do, who comes up with these ideas? Who thinks of the things that we have to do? And, you know, and, and I'm not going to, I can't say today what I would say back then at the lunch table, but... Uh, <laughs> But you know, and, and this was an opportunity, and it was an opportunity, the seat was open. If you would have told me three years ago I'd be sitting here before you today, I'd have told you you, you were nuts. Um, I am not your, they call me a politician, I said I'm still a teacher. You know, and I think I'm still a teacher because we have to educate people about what we do, okay? But, but my focus, you know, as I came to Columbus was to get, to make education what it needs to be to, to serve our students, but to make education fun to be a part of again. Education is not fun right now. You know, and I, 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 I had a, a meeting, we were in Canton, I think, earlier, but uh, I can't get into the whole story, but you know, I didn't do my SLO my last two years, I taught, you know. <laughs> That's not something you really want to, you know, be proud of, but I am proud of that because it was something that it was not, it was, it was not a, good use of my time, you know, and that's, that was why I just said I'm not going to do that. But, <laughs> but, you know, my approach here is this. 
I, you know, I come from East Central Ohio, uh, small, small county, Harrison County, we have 15,000 people. And I understand education is different all over the state, and that's one of our challenges here in Ohio. We have a very diverse state. We have a lot of differences in school districts. Um, I spent yesterday over in Van Wert. I've been up to Toledo. Uh, I have been, you know, to Little Sandy Valley uh, School District in, in the corner of Carroll, Stark, and Tusk. I, you know, we're trying to get around to different parts because I want to hear what teachers have to say, what principals have to say, what students have to say. I think we have a lot of room to improve, and when it comes to, to being a legislator, uh, as Senator Gabrione has said, we have to listen, we have to try to get it right because, you know, this process doesn't work real fast here in Columbus, unfortunately. You know, and it takes, it takes a long time to get to where we need to be. Uh, that's probably my greatest frustration, but, but I will say that uh, we're, we're going to try to work hard to, to make education enjoyable, make it an esteemed career again that people want to go into. My wife and I are guilty of this. We told our daughters, you're not going into education because of the way we, we are today. And, you know, we, we need good people in education, and, and you're here for a reason. So that's where, that's a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not your typical politician. I may, may not be as polished as others, but uh, that's okay. I, I wasn't, I told everybody I wasn't teacher of the year, but I think I've done a pretty good job with my students. So thank you for being here. All right, thank you. <laughs> Representative Robinson. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Do a little bit better than that. There's a lot of people in this audience. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. There you go. Uh, my name is Phil Robinson, and it's such a pleasure to be here with each and every one of you today. I'll start off with just two words that you probably don't hear enough, um, but are just really important, and that's thank you. Uh, thank you for everything you do in the classroom. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for great teachers and great schools who helped make me the person I am today, and it's so important. Uh, my wife Elizabeth and I, we have uh, two children, a five-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy. So needless to say, it's a little busy around the house uh, these days. Um, and my background, I worked on Capitol Hill uh, for Senator Dianne Feinstein um, after 9-11. My background is finance. You're probably wondering how did I even get involved in education. I uh, worked in the corporate sector. Uh, but I started tutoring uh, very briefly with a young man in Warrensville uh, Middle School. Um, and he was behind, and uh, I thought I knew what I was doing. Um, but I brought a, a Cinderella book to tutor a seventh grade boy, um, which is uh, the definition of failure, I guess. But, um, um, but we did that every week uh, for about 15 weeks. And at the end of that, he graduated, he gave me a plant and a note, and he misspelled the word teacher. Um, and so I can only empathize with what you have to do every single day. Um, and so I quit my job in the corporate sector, worked at City Year, which is a miracle program, a nonprofit program where young people give a year service, like the Peace Corps. Uh, to help children graduate from school. Um, and so I've had a chance not only to work at the Cleveland site, but now overseeing all of our 29 sites across the country. And there's nothing like the experience of catching a public school uh, bus with students to see what they go through, being in the school, seeing the, what you have to work with and what you need and the resources you need. Um, and it's so important that we make sure you provide everything necessary. Um, I agree with my two colleagues. Listening is very key. I would also say making sure that you have your voice heard at the State House. Um, when you speak, people listen, trust me, uh, when it comes to policy and legislation. And I can't thank you enough for all the different things we pushed. I've uh, been proud to help be part of the effort with 154, and uh, hopefully we're close to getting something done there to address the school takeover situation. And I'll just finally end with this. Uh, for me, the 20th century was about uh, making sure that there was potential and opportunity for people to have access. I really think the 21st century is about opportunity. Um, especially in a knowledge-based economy. And I can't think of a more important place, a more important uh, resource that we need to invest in than our teachers and also our schools in order to make sure that our children have what is necessary to help lead this country uh, moving forward. So it's a pleasure being here with you today. You have a friend in me, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. How are you, Scott? I'm doing great. Good. Tell us about yourself. A bit. Well, good morning, everybody. I am, I am Kenny Yuko. You know, I, I always put my Senate pin on, but before I do that, I make sure my union book goes in my pocket first. <laughs> Forty-five years I've been a union member. Third, Twenty-five of those were spent as a union organizer. You know, and, and we would go down to Columbus for district council meetings every month. And every month we would hear, do you know what they're doing in the General Assembly? You know, they want to do this, they want to do that, they want to do this, they want to do that. Anti-union conversations. And so after one meeting, as they're calling for the good and welfare of the committee before we adjourned, 
I raised my hand and I said, why don't one of us retire, have all our local unions support them, and then we'll have a seat at the table, we'll have a voice in Columbus, one who understands what working families are about, and we can finally make a difference. And that's my challenge to you, because what happened was immediately about six or seven hands went up in that room that morning, and at the hot damn, I got the conversation started. The next guy says, I make a motion to adjourn and go to the bar, and the other six people said, seconded, and the room was empty. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know what, I can do this. I went back to my office in Cleveland, and I looked at the calendar, and I said, okay, you know what, I can retire in two years. My state rep will be term limited in two years. I'm gonna give up a job that pays an awful lot of money, gives me a brand new car, an expense account. They paid for my gas, my insurance. We went on fancy trips, I had a beautiful office. We had elections every three years, not every two years, as we did in the House. The, the only difference was we were never opposed. We always got in automatically. So why would I want to give all that up? Because you know what, I knew somebody had to get out there and fight, fight for working families. And the same things I fought for, for as a union representative, better wages, health care, pensions, non-discrimination, and the right to work in a safer work environment were the same things I would fight for as a state representative and now as your state senator. Things haven't changed. We're still fighting for better wages, and, and health care is always a top priority. We want to make sure that when we do get eligible to retire, that we can do so in dignity. And, and that's why Senate Bill 5, when it popped up, meant so much to me. And that's why we traveled all 88 counties, seven days a week, morning, noon, and night, talking why Senate Bill 5 was a bad idea, and thanks to all of you and the hard work that you did in all of your districts, we overturned that by significant numbers. Now, the one message I got when I was first campaigning, and I, and I stole it, and I, you know, union guys, I guess, are kind of thieves anyway, especially organizers, so I can't really tell you who said it first or who I should give credit to. I'm getting an awful lot of credit for that, and I'm kind of embarrassed by it, but Someone once said that our children make up 30% of our population, yet they're 100% of our future. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't make that awareness known to every person in our state, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, we're missing the boat because you know what? Our future depends on, as Lily pointed out, her granddaughters, Pam and I, we have three granddaughters that I, I think about every single day. I wanna make sure that we make sure we do everything right. Now, another message I started saying in 2005 when I first took office was that in Ohio, as I saw it too, because I, I knew I knew labor issues, but I thought, okay, now I gotta get an overall picture if I'm gonna be a state rep. So I took a look at every, every aspect of government that we can look at, and I came to one conclusion. In Ohio, we legislate by zip code. We educate by zip code. We incarcerate by zip code, and that has got to stop. It's got to stop, and it's gonna stop when we have strong public schools that says every single child, every single child has a right to the best education that money can buy. We're not gonna pick and choose who gets a good education and who's gonna get sold down the river, because that's wrong. So I wanna go ahead and, and if you don't mind. Now, now one thing is, one, you know, this okay. has to do with the gun issue. Yeah. When, when we had the tragic shooting in, in Dayton, Ohio, and our governor went down there and he couldn't speak because everyone kept on saying, do something. Well, we are gonna do something about the gun issue. We're gonna do something about education. We're gonna do something about our children and we're gonna do something about our future. And it all begins with you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we got some hot topics. Uh, and because we had a number of things we want to talk about, uh, I'll ask you to keep your responses brief. You don't all have to answer every question, uh, but you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, and I'm going to start with uh, something that was already mentioned a couple times, and that's House Bill 154. Uh, can, you, can you share where you are on, personally, on ending state takeovers and passing and moving House Bill 154? And if you have anything to share in terms of uh, what we should be anticipating. I know I was in a meeting with Senator Lehner yesterday and I'm feeling kind of optimistic, more optimistic than I have in quite a while because I think we're about ready to see some movement again on that bill. Uh, but if you can share your perspective on, on state takeovers in House Bill 154. Senator Gavarone, you want to start? Well, thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, actually, 
I really support uh, locally based turnaround programs and um, preserving the collective bargaining rights. I understand there was a conversation yesterday and I'm looking forward to getting more information. I served with Peggy Leonard on the Senate Education Committee and um, we've listened to hours and hours and hours of testimony on this very issue. And um, it's something that I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic we're gonna come up with a, an outcome that's going to really make a difference and um, and the current uh, academic stress distress commission uh, model that we're under right now. All right, that's good news. Anybody else want to weigh in on, on state takeovers 154? I, I will say this is a primary sponsor 154. We put that bill uh, through the house in, in the first day of May. And you know, we didn't get things done uh, quickly as, as what we had liked. We put a moratorium. I actually presented the moratorium to give us one year to, and not that wasn't for the state that was to hold us as legislators accountable to get something done so that we don't have to go down this road again with any more than the three districts that we have. Uh, I am I'm encouraged. I was on the phone last night on my way home with uh, Representative Joe Miller, the uh, the other st sponsor of 154. Um, and, and, and trust me when I say this, it, it's a priority for us, and I say us for for myself and, and and Representative Miller to get something to get something accomplished that we can live with, and, and, I, and I'm encouraged, you know, we, we've got some movement going again, um, but we, we have to get something done to, to, you know, to help. You know, and I've told everybody, the problem with most of our issues in education, they're not our teachers, it's our leadership. We have leadership that causes us, I mean, I taught for 15 or 23 years, and I had 14 principals in 23 years. Those good years were when we had good leadership. Those bad years were when we had poor leadership. And, and unfortunately, that happens in education. So I think we're, hopefully, I agree with you, Scott. I think we're, we're, a, we're, we're making progress. And uh, I, I'm going to probably have a conversation next week with the governor's office to see if we can, uh, we can get, the door, get the door closed and get this done. Great. <clears throat> Representative Robinson? I agree. I'm optimistic as well. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with uh, Chairman Jones um, with the Democratic Caucus as well. And in a bipartisan way, I mean, the bill, House Bill 154, as you all know, passed almost universally in the, in the House, and that doesn't happen very often. Um, we're very um, optimistic that we are moving in the right direction. I'm against state takeovers, period, full stop. Uh, that's the, uh, number one. Um, number two, we need to make sure we restore uh, collective bargaining as well to uh, our teachers and our unions when it comes to working in these schools as well. I believe, I'm, you know, um, I, I like to keep things simple. Uh, I believe in local control. We have local school boards, uh, superintendents, teachers. They know best on the ground, not in Columbus. And so I want to make sure that they have a voice. And the last thing is making sure that teachers have a voice in whatever that we design, making sure they not only have a voice at the table, but also in implementation. The worst thing you can do is decide something for dedicated people who don't have a voice at all at the table. And I, I think we're going in the right direction to be able to make something happen there. Um, and I support making sure that we can get 154 uh, pushed across the table uh, on behalf of all teachers across the state of Ohio and our children. Okay, great. Scott, you know, we have three school districts, Youngstown, Lorraine, and East Cleveland, who are in school takeover mode right now. I represent East Cleveland, and I'm very proud of our teachers that we have from East Cleveland that are here today that do their hard work day in and day out. They spend their own money on these children and, and they work, they do everything in their power to make sure the children in East Cleveland got a great education. It's not their fault that the state of Ohio and the General Assembly has not addressed school funding so that we can properly get the schools the tools that they need for long overdue. I mean, we four times the Rolf decision. I don't know about you guys, but I know, you know, we don't listen to the judges in our, in our district. You're going to go to jail or something. There's going to be some consequences. There are no consequences. The consequences are our children and their futures, and that's just absolutely wrong. All right, thank you. So this afternoon, we're going to be talking a lot about state report cards, and uh, I know there's a lot of work happening on this, and Representative Jones, your co-chair of a study committee on this issue, uh, I want to ask you all, how do you feel about our current report cards, and do you support our idea of eliminating A to F grades? Whoever wants to start, actually, Representative Jones, Chairman, uh, why don't you start since, since you're working on this pretty. No pressure here, but uh, <laughs> you want to know what I think of report cards? Here, we'll give it two thumbs down. But uh, you know what? Um, I, I'll keep this brief because we have a lot to cover, but 
Uh, we did have our state report card committee, which was commissioned through the budget in uh, uh, House Bill 166 we passed in July. We've met, we've had a couple meetings, we've heard from uh, a lot of different stakeholders, and I will tell you, there's a, a very uh, strong uh, consensus to get rid of the A through F. That was one of the first things whenever I came to Columbus back in January, I met with LSC, that's our Legislative Commission, Service Commission, I said, what do we have to do to get rid of the A through F on the report card? And the problem with A through F is this. The general public does not understand it. They think if their school was not an A or a B that they're failing. And that is not a true statement. There is nothing further from the truth. So that's one of the common themes that we're going to see with the state report card. I really, I, I think there's a real very good chance that we're going to see A through F go away. I think we're also going to see prepared for success either go away or recalculate it because prepared for success is, it has been a failure. We have 511 districts out of 608 that have a D or an F in prepared for success. If I'm a business person and I'm coming to the state of Ohio and I look at that, I'm thinking, why would I want to go there? They're not doing a very good job preparing their students for success. You know, and that's, that again is, a not, is not an accurate measure. Um, indicators met is another thing that we're looking to, to uh, you know, quit grading or, or reform. And here's the thing I think we have to understand. As, as, as educators, we, we want to be accountable. We feel like we are accountable. But we have to make sure that people understand what we are doing. And they don't understand what we do in the classroom. And, you know, and, and whenever, the th and this is the, the, you know, the, the frustrating thing with me of value added, if I can say this. Sure. Value added is, 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 yeah, someone said it. I, can't, I don't want to repeat it up here. But <laughs> I asked someone, that the, the group that does the value added piece, I said, explain it to me. In 10 minutes or less, they couldn't do it. If I had a parent come in and I couldn't explain to a parent how their child got a grade in 10 minutes or less, then I'm a failure as a teacher because that means the system is too complicated. And that's what value added is. So those are, those are probably some of the common themes. There, there's more, but I don't want to take all the time, but I, I would say this. Our state report card is not a true indication of what we're doing in the state of Ohio. Uh, it's, it's truly not. So I think what we're going to probably see is we're going to go to three indicators as far as instead of A through F, you're either meeting expectations, you're exceeding, or you're not meeting. Simply put, that's what it is. You know, and if we're not meeting, let's figure out what we have to do to get you there. But we have a lot of schools that are meeting a lot of expectations. Uh, but we have to quit grading everything too. We can report a lot of information because we don't show any of the good things we do in education on that report card, nothing. And the next thing is this, it's all based around test scores. I'm going to speak for the group here and I think I can do this safely. None of us had to pass anything except our classes in high school to graduate whenever we graduated. And you know what, how did we ever get to this point? I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. But you know, the, so the, the report card needs to be more of a measure of what the good things we're doing in education. And let's face it, we have areas we can improve, we know that. We know that as teachers, we, we know maybe we need to do a little bit better job with, with working with kids in, in, in reading areas. But, but let's, let's let the report card be a true indication of what is going on in our schools and not just how well our kids can take a test. All right, thank you. You know, I think, you want to jump in on this one, Senator Gavron? Yeah. Just briefly, you know, as a parent, I saw the school report cards and really, uh, I think these, these reports, they confuse parents they frustrate teachers, and they do not accurately reflect what's going on in our classrooms. <clears throat> and I do support a system that will help schools improve rather than punishing our schools. And I am looking forward to seeing uh, what the task force comes up with. I, I think if we're looking at raw data, it would be easier to understand than this uh, arbitrary letter grades. <laughs> So I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to your work, Representative Jones. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm hopeful that you're going to like what you see with what we are proposing after today as well. So, the, so you're gonna, we're going to be sending that to you as soon as we're done with our work today. Um, I want to move to another topic, and that's school vouchers, because it's uh, a very hot topic right now. We have seen an explosion of schools that are designated as ed choice, and along with that, uh, the number of dollars that are being diverted from local public schools 
uh, to vouchers that pay for private school tuition. Uh, first off, can you talk about your, your own feeling about that? Uh, and do you see any movement happen in the legislature to, to right that wrong? Uh, and, and give us some relief sooner rather than later. And Representative Robinson, why don't you start with that? Sure, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just start off with a brief story. Uh, last week I was um, on the phone with the leadership from Solon Schools. So as many of you know, Solon's one of the top in the state. Um, uh, reason why many people moved to Solon. And they asked me full blank, the full stop, they said, why do we have one of our elementary schools on the list? Um, and it just shows that all these things, the report cards, everything's interrelated. Uh, I am not a, a fan of vouchers. Uh, what has happened in expansion is not helpful. I do believe there is support in the state legislature, bipartisan support, uh, to do something to address this issue. And I think we will see something sooner rather than later. Um, just in, um, I'll give you an example. In uh, the Parma School District system, uh, we're talking about potentially losing two to three million dollars with the voucher program uh, from the school district. Parents are confused. People who are trying to apply uh, to uh, potentially to uh, private schools or or, um, or your parochial schools are confused. Parochial schools are advertising uh, to parents in public schools to try to recruit them to go there. This is not how we want our public schools to work. Uh, we want to make sure that we're investing public dollars in public schools to make them as strong as possible, to make sure we have pop, uh, uh, options for every single student who's going to public school, not a race to the bottom moving dollars along. Um, and so, for example, if you're a top-rated school, you should not have a school on this Ed Choice uh, chart at all. Um, and I don't also believe that we should expand the program as well. So I think this is something we're going to work on. It's the top priority. Um, and I actually, my phone's been buzzing because I have state representatives from both sides texting saying what we're going to do. So we're going to make something uh, happen on this front. Uh, and we're going to need your help as well. Thank you. Okay. You know, Anybody Scott, else want to jump in? The, Senator Yuko. One, one of the bright spots about this conversation is that it is getting bipartisan support right now. And parties, members from both parties, both sides of the aisle, are talking about what do we need to do to create this type of change. Vouchers have done nothing but take away valuable dollars from our public schools, negating our ability to educate our kids. Let's face it, you know, our last budget did a tremendous disservice to you as teachers and to our children as students. And we offered an amendment offered by Senator Teresa Fetter, a former teacher who, like you, gave up her job so she can become a voice in the Ohio General Assembly. And unfortunately, it was laid on the table and defeated without conversation. We're going to get some conversation now, but we need your help. We need each and every one of you not only to get yourself active, but when you go back to schools on Monday, get your colleagues, get everybody else involved, get your neighbors involved, get your family and friends involved, call your legislators, let them know what's right and let them know what's wrong. And Ed, the voucher choice program is wrong. We need to support our public schools and get back on track again and move Ohio forward. All right. Senator Gavron. Um, thank you. Um, regarding uh, school choice, I would certainly support direct funding so public schools aren't being harmed um, by this. And this is actually getting bipartisan support in the Cup Patterson funding model that's currently going through the House right now. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how that progresses. OK, great. Um, speaking of Cup Patterson, that actually uh, is a good segue. Thank you. Um, do you support the work of Representatives Cup and Patterson in developing a new funding formula? And what do you believe are the essential elements of getting school funding right in Ohio? Whoever wants to go first well, on that. You know, let's, let's talk about this. Where, where did Cup and Patterson come from? Bob Cup was a former member of the Ohio Supreme Court who issued these four DeRolf decisions. So he knows what we were supposed to do. Where did John Patterson come from? Dr. John Patterson is a former educator, taught for, for years and years and years. He knows what we have to do. They went out and they, they had, uh, rather than just sit down the two of them and try to figure out a plan, they went all throughout Ohio. They, they divided up into sections. They went out and they listened to each and every one of you. What is it that you want us to do and how can we best address this problem? And we've done so. Now, I, I thought for a moment there this year, we might have a chance because of, just because of the way we work. Now, you think about it, 20 years, 20 years plus years have gone by, and we haven't done a single damn thing about it. We were finally talking about it. We had a chance to get it done. I thought we were going to put it in the budget this year. It got taken out, much to my chagrin, and, and treated as a standalone bill. And just like much other of our legislation, off to a very slow start. 
But this is an opportunity for us to get it right for the first time in a long, long time. Is it perfect? Probably not, okay? And, and I've learned being in the General Assembly for as long as I have been and being a union organizer for all those years before that, not all my ideas are perfect, and, and when I do negotiate something, I don't always get everything I want. But what this will do is bring us a whole lot closer to where we're supposed to be. So I strongly support the efforts of Bob Cup and John Patterson. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to jump in on the school funding question? I, I'll, I'll just say this, um, and just to echo <coughs> Senator Yuko, Bob Cup and, and John Patterson are two good men. I want to say that. Uh, and they are working extremely hard. And I would do, I would love nothing more than to see us get something done with school funding with Cup and Patterson before those two gentlemen, their time is up in the legislator be, legislative be, body because they have put those hours in. And, and I will say this, and this is the challenge we have in Ohio. You know, and, I, and everyone asks me what I think of Cup, Cap, Cup Patterson. I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good start. I hopefully we can, we can finish it. And this is one of the things that, you know, and you may disagree with me on this, and that's okay. But I always, when they say, what do you think of Cup Patterson, I, I always ask the next question. Why do we have different divisions in athletics in Ohio? Why do we have division one, two, three, four, five in football or whatever? Because we want to put kids on an even and equal playing field according to the size of their school. I think, in my mind, we're going to have to look at something like that with education because I'm going to say this. We have five states within the state of Ohio. We have Northeast Ohio, Northwest, Southwest, Southeast, and Central Ohio. And they're different. Let's be real. There are different challenges in each area. Poverty levels are different. You know, opportunities are different. And I think that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen anything because, let's face it, a one-size-fits-all is going to be hard to address here. And I think that's one of the things, and I've had that conversation with both Representatives Cup and Patterson, and they said we've never thought of it that way. So, you know, hopefully we can come up, and, and, and I'm going to be uh, real frank, $5,000 in Southern Ohio means a lot more than maybe $5,000 in Central Ohio. And we have to realize, you know, we have, a, you know, with bus routes, my high school, my, my, my local school district, we have one school in the county. And the buses bring all the kids to one, you know what, that's, a, that's an expense that, that doesn't exist in every district. That's why it's going to be hard. But I think Cup and Patterson is our best chance. I hope that we get it. You know, and, and again, as, as Senator Yuko said, it may not be perfect, but it's going to be better than what we have. I truly believe that. Okay. I think we've got time for, for probably one more question, unless there's any, uh, any that are coming from the floor. I don't think we do. But uh, we, we spent a lot of time talking about testing reduction. And uh, there was a bill that, uh, you know, we were, worked very hard with Representative Gail Manning and Representative Erica Crawley, it's House Bill 239, uh, that would reduce the number of required tests to the state, to the federal minimums, um, but also go beyond that and, and require that there be some accountability for ODE and accountability for every local school board uh, to put some teeth into that 2% and 3% uh, limit that's in law that I think is just for show, not, not anything real, um, and require that districts, you know, get real about reducing the number of standardized testing, tests that they're uh, offering or requiring and ensuring parent and educator voice in that process uh, and accountability if they're going to go beyond the 2% or the 3%. Uh, can you talk about where, where that bill is and, and do you support uh, our efforts on reducing standardized testing in our schools. And I know that's something that's in the House Education Committee, so Representative Robinson, Chairman Jones, if you want to start, but, but on the general topic, if any of you want to weigh in. So, so uh, House Bill 239 is, uh, is, has had two hearings, I believe, and it is, it is uh, still on the radar, and we, uh, they're doing a little cleanup because of the changes in the graduation requirements that were in the budget that reduced the number of tests that were required for graduation. They're cleaning that bill up a little bit to, to make it match with that. But, you know, I've already said it once, and I'm going to say it again. We, we, we've got to quit relying on tests to, to, to determine whether students should graduate from high school or not. I mean, bottom line, you know, and, and, I, and I'm going to go a step further, and this is really going out on a branch, and I don't want to take a lot of time. 
we start testing our students in the third grade. I, third grade, kindergarten, I mean, third grade's when it really starts with our K3, you know, with our, with our reading, and, and there are two problems. A student can only hear that they have failed or they're not performing to standard for so long before they truly believe that they're not very good or they're not very smart. Mm -hmm. they, lose, they lose interest in education and I'm, they, they have to fill the void in their life with something else and whether that something else is drugs, video games, uh, whatever the case might be, we question why do we have all these mental issues with kids in schools. I think a lot of it comes back to the testing part that they have been told for so long that they're not very smart. They believe it, and you know what? Then they have to start finding a way to be successful. And whether that way to be successful is through activity that's not permissible, it might be that. But so that's the first thing we've got to we've got to get rid of some of the test. You know, we have to have accountability. I, I, I'm not going to disagree with that, but I think we also need to quit relying on those tests to tell us everything about those students because those kids have a lot more going on in their life than what happened on that one day that they took that test. Thank you. Really glad to hear that uh, 239 is still alive because that's, that's really important. So, Representative Robinson. Sure, uh, I agree a lot with uh, Chairman Jones uh, stated. Number one, I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of House Bill 239. Um, and I believe that we should go from seven to three mandated uh, state tests that matches up with the federal minimum. I think that's necessary. We need to do that immediately. And whether you're a child who's excelling or a child who's struggling, uh, when you're in the classroom, and I know all of you see this, and the sheer panic many of them have many times taking the a test. Stress. Um, the stress. Um, we're trying to skip going to school sometimes in order not to take the test. Um, having to take it over and over and over. We talked earlier in a knowledge economy, providing opportunity, we have to create uh, opportunities for our children to think analytically, and you cannot do that if every single day you're teaching to a test. Um, and so we're going to do whatever it takes to try to find a compromise so that we can reduce the number of testing, uh, fully support it, and we'll do whatever it takes to, to make that happen. All right, thank you. You know, something I thought about one time was when you ask all of you out here, why did you become a teacher? Was it so that you can absolutely just teach to the test day in and day out? Because I don't think so. I think all of us, during the course of our lifetime, had that one, two, or three exceptional teachers. And I can remember giving the floor uh, speech for Senate Bill 5, and I called out three of my high school teachers by name. And I said how, how they shaped my life, how they turned me around. And why? Because they were creative, they were engaging, they were passionate, and they were understanding. And because of that, I have the highest respect for them. And by the way, all three of them reached out to me after that floor speech because they heard my message and they just wanted to call and say thank you. And that's why our message to you is always thank you. But when you take that away from our teachers, what have we got? We have, we have, we have a profession right now that's good. We're gonna have a hard time getting future teachers wanting to sign up for a program that, that takes away your ability to become teachers that you wanna be. Teachers that will create a success for not only you as a teacher, but for your students to adapt to the future and com be competitive, not only with the people from our own areas, but from people from all over the world right now, because that's who you're teaching to. You have to teach your, make sure these kids are competitive, that they can go anywhere in the world and stand their own, and, and they will with your help. And that's why I, I think we absolutely we have to give our teachers the, the tools, all the tools that they need to do, Scott, so that they can do what they do best. Thank you. So that's... Uh, the time for, yes, thank you very much again. Um, give each of you uh, just a, a 30 seconds, <laughs> if, you could, if you could. Uh, just a couple final, final thoughts uh, before we leave. And, and why don't we start with Senator Yukon and, we'll, and Senator Gavaron will give you the last word. Well, thank, thank you, Scott. Thanks for having us. Thank you for your, you've been so, so kind and so attentive. And I really appreciate that. My message to you is make sure that you do get involved. Make sure you're out there calling your legislators, getting your fellow teachers involved. You know, I've been on too, too many times when people sit on the sidelines. This is not the time to sit on the sidelines. It's time for you to get involved, get your message out there, 
and hold the elected people accountable. If they're not going to listen to the, the concerns and the demands of the people we represent, it's time for them to go. It's very simple. But thank you for all that you do, and God bless. Thank you, Senator Yuko. Representative Robinson. Thank you again uh, for having us today. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate the passion you bring. Um, it reminds me of uh, when uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was in the uh, Oval Office with A. Philip Randolph, a famous civil rights uh, leader. And they were talking about a lot of different things. And he said, you know, I support you, uh, but the most important thing I need from you is to, to hold me accountable and keep me accountable. And what I'd ask for you is to make sure you do that. You've done that already on House Bill 154. Keep doing that on other different issues. Um, I can't think of a more important thing. We talk a lot about economic development, a lot about where to invest all of our money in the state. The most important thing in my book, the reason why I'm sitting here is public education, education in general, and we have to invest and make sure we have the resources necessary, give you the tools necessary to educate our future. I appreciate you, and as Barbara Jordan, uh, former Congresswoman said, um, if we do this together and we get this done right, we can make America as good as promised and make the state as good as promised. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chairman Jones. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here again. Um, yeah, it's been said many times, but you know, my passion is right here with you. I, I left uh, a job back home. I was the highest paid teacher in my school district, and I had the best job in my school district. But I was frustrated because of where we were going and where we are. And I'm going to, I'm going to echo some of the comments to you folks that I started to do whenever before I got to this position. Build relationships with your legislators. Give them the credit that they need. Also hold them accountable, but build a relationship so whenever you get, make that phone call, it means something. You know, we like to hear from people on, on good terms as well. Don't wait until things are bad before you start calling. Those phone calls mean a lot to us, but you know, hey, bring your kids to the state house. Ask your representative to, to host, you know, the, we love to do that's the best part of our job when we get to do things like that but build that relationship don't be afraid to get involved i think that's part of our problem we don't want to get involved until things are are, are bad and that's not a, that's not a good situation my my goal is this it's simple whenever my time in the legislature is done whether it's you know at the end of, of seven years or eight years whenever you know i get voted out as, as kind of senator yuko says to get rid of them but my goal is this I want to leave education a lot better than what I found it. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to do that. Thank you. And Senator Gavarone. I'd like to echo some of the comments. Um, it is so important to keep that conversation going with your legislators. Uh, I spent yesterday talking with a, a bunch of teachers um, and the superintendent from Wauseon Schools because someone called and said, we want to have a conversation. And I've been going throughout my district and speaking with teachers, touring the schools. And every time I do that, I learn something new. Um, every school has different challenges and different needs. And it's, it's important that you communicate with your legislator and really build that relationship because you know, we work for you. And it's important that uh, we're listening to you and that uh, we hear your concerns. And I want to finish by thanking each and every one of you for all you do to bring out the very best in our kids. The kids are our future, and thank you for your service to them. All right, thank you, Senator. Let's thank all of our panelists, our friends of education, Senator Yuko, Representative Robinson, Representative Jones, Senator Gavarone. Thank you so much for the work that you do and for taking the time to hear us today.